Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, finally, I've finally done it. I'm months late to the party, guys, but we finally have a proper video today on the curse set in Hydra. We're running it on Krisk specifically, on whom it is a massive upgrade, but the curse set is, I think it's safe to say, it probably is the number one set for Hydra clan boss in the entire game. And it is a complete game changer. Why is it so strong? Well, a 50% chance to place a hex debuff for two turns on every attack. So on champions with lots of AOE attacks, you can very consistently get up that hex debuff on all of the heads. This has a wonderful utility of letting your champions target the head of mischief. And that actually is really nice on full auto, right? If you're trying to do auto teams, head of mischief is very squishy. He's a really great head to kill. You get the hex on him, that can actually really work well because you kill him, he depletes their turn meter, it stops him stealing your stuff. It's just a nice little combo. So that's great. Hex also duplicates 10% of all the single target damage that you do, the heads that are under hex, and it duplicates 2% of all the AoE damage that you do to heads under hex. It doesn't sound like much, but it adds up to a huge amount of damage over your run. So it's really good. How have we built Krisk? Well, he's in a fairly standard Krisk for Hydra build. We've got him with good speed. He's tanky so he can stay alive. He has enough resistance to resist mischief and enough accuracy to land his stuff. Now, we are relying on our, our Hydra bonuses. We got extra speed, bringing him up to 270. Uh, he's over 515 resistance, which is beautiful for Nightmare. And he has the 400 accuracy, preferably, I think, 405 for Nightmare, though uh, we're running today on Brutal, not on Nightmare uh, for this particular one. And um, we've got him in a fairly standard uh, mastery type build. You know, we've got the War Master, we've got extending buffs, then his debuffs. I mean, you could maybe go for Sniper as well, but uh, I think this is fine. So there we go. Simple enough. The tricky thing is, of course, getting Curse Gear with good enough stats. This is what we've got. In fact, I should actually ascend this. Uh, we've got, you know, weapon. We're looking for really especially gear with speed and accuracy and resistance for Krisk as well. So speed. And these are not rolling anyway crazy. Uh, we could even rework this into uh, speed at some point. So then he's got resistance chest, speed, resist, accuracy, even HP percent there is beautiful. I think he's got probably resistance banner with triple speed. We could boost that up even more neck with resist and accuracy and uh this is actually really good blood shield ring gives him a shield makes him more consistent to mischief tank so let's click play let's go in what we have here uh to show this off we're going in on brutal difficulty i've double speeded it so we can get through a little bit faster we have honestly a very budget team now this being a chris and curse set showcase he's obviously by far the most difficult one to get and i actually realized as i put them in that uh, he didn't have the right preset. We want him to open with his Provoke, yeah? Um, but this is, apart from that, Krisk, a very budget team. We've got Lydia that everyone can get, Arbiter that everyone can get, uh, Wukong who's the login, Razzlevarg's a fusion, and then we've got Shamail. I actually need to do some more uh, like teams without a Shamail in the future. Um, that's definitely something to do. It's just quite tricky to build full auto teams without a Shamail. Like, most of the perfect fail champions need buff extenders, which is not easy to get into your teams. It's just a bit tricky. I'd, I'd say Mithrala definitely opens up some some doors because Mithrala can extend your your buffs and also decrease your debuffs. So she could open up some stuff. But as you can see here, like the Chris, he's gone in. He's done a couple of hits. We've got Hex on a decapitated head. We've got Hex on the, uh, the head of uh, Decay. And it just sort of adds up. And there we go. Now we have uh, mis uh, not Mischief. Yeah, we've got the Head of Mischief. He was under Hex as well. Though a cleanse has gone through. Interesting thing about this and about this team. And you can see like Razzlevarg A1-ing a head that's just respawned. You know, it's on full auto, so silly stuff is going to happen. What is interesting about this team? For the most part, Krisk, at this speed, so he's 270 after our bonuses, he is nearly always able to lock down the head of Decay most of the time just by himself with the Provoke. Not perfect, but it's actually fairly close to perfect. This has been a pretty big, I think, change in 
and how things are are going. I think with the extra stats that we've got recently, it's a like I said, I think it's a fairly big change. Uh, honestly, how does it work? Well, it's pretty simple because we've got a speed aura from Razzlevark helps a little bit, but then we've got an Arbiter turn meter boosting. It actually enables Chris to take so many turns that we're actually going to be fine. So I, I I think I found when doing this run that the head of Decay will definitely get a cleanse at the start of your run. But oftentimes after that, it's actually quite easy to lock him down, which is kind of cool, right? It's sort of the power of turn meter boost, which is an underrated thing in Hydra, right? You talked about that with the Fina uh, little showcase that we did earlier in the week. The turn meter boosting is really good, but it's hard to quantify. Um, We've got, as well, the nice thing about this team, we've got triple damage, right? Razzlevarg, big damage. You could build Lydia for damage. I haven't, but you could. But Razzlevarg is obviously built for damage. Shamail does good damage. And then Wukong. This is something I really wanted to use more. I think Wukong is an absolutely top tier uh, champion for most of us for Hydra because he covers our block buff needs. And he's actually... He's actually probably the best block buff champion you have for Hydra for most people because it's he steals all buffs before going. The block buffs goes through Poison Cloud. Uh, it's not affected by affinity. The hit obviously is, but all the, the buff stealing and block buffs happens first. He's just fantastic. He's also well worth building for Arena so that will carry over. And he does some really good damage as well. Let's see if we can capture it. And we get some decapitated heads here. He can hit for well over a million because he fully ignores defense when Helm Smasher procs on his A2 as well. So that's what he brings. He brings actually substantial damage for a block buff champion, which is really good. Again, not as much as a Supreme Galak, but, you know, still a really solid amount. Um, downside is we need to bring him in with an increased attack. But that's what we've got in this team. We've got an Arbiter with a Razzlevarg who needs increased attack, the Shamel needs increased attack, and so does Wukong. So we've got it all. And then we've got the Strengthen from Lydia to keep us alive. And we've got, well, basically Krisk to keep us alive. <laughs> Fairly simple. Fairly straightforward. You know, let's, let's see. Maybe he'll Wukong. I think he's been provoked, actually. See, can Wukong land a hit? That's sort of what I want to see. See, Wukong, I believe in you. And of course, the Hex will duplicate 10% of all that Wukong damage. Let's see him come in here. Yeah, look at that. Did you guys see that? Bam, that was massive. Massive hit. That's what I really like about Wukong. I think I just missed it. <laughs> Hang on. Let me get back up here. Here we go. Let's see. We get the hex on everybody. And like, look at that. Like, that is pretty juicy. Wukong. Well, bam. 1.4 million damage. Gorgeous. Hex just did 100. 40 damage, 140,000 to Head of Wrath. Look at the HP, 140k to this head. Because this head's decapitated, he took extra. He just took 423,000, right? The Hex is benefiting from the decapitated bonus as well. So it's, it's just absolutely massive. It's a huge amount of damage. Things can really ramp up. And this is the power of Hex debuff, right? That Hex debuff just took our 1.4 million and added... What, and added another 280 plus another 400? I mean, it added almost 50% damage, right? Onto that hit. We probably did 600, 700,000 roughly damage. It's kind of nuts. It's kind of a huge amount. Uh, it's very strong, right? And this is why you really want Hex in every single team. You really, really do. It's a huge boost to your Hydra damage. It, it really is substantial uh, and works very well with Warmaster all that sort of stuff, etc. So yeah, cannot praise it enough. As you can see with this team, uh, at the moment we're turn count 44, we're doing 66 million damage. This is on Brutal. This team obviously works on any difficulty, right? This team could work on Nightmare. Obviously, you might need a bit more defensive stats on your champions to keep them alive. That's obviously something to watch out for because you take more damage on higher difficulties. Uh, but the core of this team, I think, is just really solid. It's super accessible. And I'll show you some alternatives as well for my clan mates. I actually have even better, similar, actually quite similar teams to this, um, but better. Now, this week, I unfortunately was not as lucky. The first week we ran this, like we can skip on ahead further on. You can see now we're over 200 million here on Brutal. 136 turns in, about half an hour of that auto 
gameplay. I think mostly auto. Maybe I clicked a button a couple of times, but I think it's pretty much all auto the way through. Um, no, okay. You can see I was targeting the head. So I did for this. I did. I must have targeted heads when they devoured champions. Must be what I did to make it more consistent. Um, but I ran this last week full auto and actually did better. It did just shy. I think 494 million or something like that. I think this week we didn't do quite as good. So for instance, we were hitting, we trigger the turn count limit at about 300 million this time. And then it went all the way through, uh, it get like, we're still going, we're still trucking, right? You know, the boss turn count, we're getting up towards 300 boss turn count. We're still going, we're not slowing down. <laughs> like We're still blasting here. We're still pumping. It is the actual turn limit of the fight. That is what catches us out, unfortunately, in the end. Um, and that's what brings it to an end. So I think this week we're about 435, 436 maybe. Oh, slightly, yeah, 436. One last hit, as a little bit. Yeah, so there we go. That's where we ended up, guys. 436.69, nice million damage. Um, Razzlevarg doing most of it, 146. The Shemail, about 98k. And this is what I'm saying, Wukong, right? Wukong. 95 million like he's actually he's contributing a really big chunk of damage a really big chunk so don't sleep on your son wukong as an amazing hydra champion arbiter's not doing anything really lydia did a bit of damage at war master and there you can see krisk right he has war master that's doing probably similar to what lydia is doing massive chunk of damage 74 million from krisk what is that damage I mean, let's be real, at least 50 million, at least, is Hex, right? Hex has really pushed us further. It has boosted the damage. So it's, it's yeah, it's really good. By the way, Lightning Cage is there just to make him a bit more consistent at Mischief Tanking. Maybe adds a tiny bit of damage, but not not too much, I would say. And again, in a perfect world, we probably have Razzlevarg with Cruelty, but we've got 5-star Shamael with Cruelty is just fine. Polymorph's not doing anything for us. We've got no, no Blessing on Lydia, tragically. But there you go. So let me show you the bills on these other cha on these champions. Then let me show you some alternative teams. So we've seen the Krisk. Uh, let's look at uh, well, let's look at uh, Wukong. We've just been talking him up. So this is Wukong as I use him for Arena. He is in six piece Merciless at thirty five percent ignore defense. Now that actually doesn't help him on his A two right with Savage Gear. It's going to be just fine because with Savage Gear plus Helm Smasher right, we've got him running with Helm Smasher. 25% ignore defense. You get the 25 from Savage, and then his A2 ignores 50%. So you're ignoring 100% defense without Merciless, with just Savage or Lethal. So you can hit as hard on his A2. In fact, you could probably hit harder because you can get bigger stats because my Merciless gear is not correct. Like we've got a five-star weapon, right? You can do better. What is nice about Merciless, I think, is that damage. Uh, the skill cooldown reduction is great, both for Arena and for this in Hydra. Ultimately, nine piece Merciless would be amazing. The chance for an extra turn on Wukong, I think, is quite disgusting, but you know, it's going to be difficult to get him there because he wants a lot of stats. We want him to be good speed. We've got him really good. Like he's five star, so he's really pimping. He's got high attack. He's got 400 accuracy. Again, if we pop him into Hydra, one thing to mention we do have 12% ignore defense in Hydra, which is, again, even more. It's not, like I said, sadly, it's not going to scale up Wukong's damage too much. But it definitely helps champions like Razzlevarg do a lot more damage that aren't capping out ignore defense anyway. Yeah, with Hydra it goes up a good chunk higher. But uh, yeah, Wukong he's he's pimping like his with that thirty eight percent blessing like his crit damage is massive. Uh, so yeah, and like I said, War Master for him. We have Razzlevarg. Now Razzlevarg he's uh, in he is in Helm Smasher as well. I've tried him in that. Uh, this would really scale better if we could get him into Savage or Lethal. Right now he's in crit damage speed. He's in random gear uh, for the simple reason that the stats are, are actually not even that crazy. Now I look at it compared to Wukong. Yeah, he's got 300 speed, but he only has 6k attack, 308% crit damage. So there's room to grow there. I might look into sw swapping him into a different set at some point, but not in a huge rush. It's on my medium term list of things to do for sure. We had, let's look at the other damage, which is Shamail. So this is number one Shamail. So he's coming in, he has five-star Awaken, which is a nice deal. He's got crit damage, stone skin protection, random sets, because bearing in mind, he does ignore 100% defense, basically with his A2 nearly all the time. 5.7K attack, 
three, two, four percent this. So his attack is quite low. It's kind of hard to get his attack super high because his base attack isn't that high, but he's very fast at two, five, eight speed. Uh, so again, to perfect this sort of build, he would be, I mean, again, his perfect build would probably be merciless as well, nine piece. Um, but we could even get him into reflex or impulse or something like that. Even zeal is really strong. Something that's going to boost his damage up. Zeal is definitely a set I want to get more of. It's just I mean, 35 wins in live arena just takes bloody forever. So how are you supposed to do it? And he has Giant Slayer for more damage. Then we come to the last two. So we've got Lydia, who I have magically never managed to pull even a one-star blessing for. It's a miracle. So she's got Extending Buffs and Debuffs and War Master. I have built her in Guardian to try to keep us alive. Uh, you could absolutely run your Lydia in Hex, right? Lydia would be a solid enough choice for Hex. You could absolutely run her in Reflex. You know, try get more cooldowns. Lots of things you can do with Lydia. I have her built. I like this build quite a chunk. Obviously, she's going to get quite a bit tankier with the one-star blessing, but she's fine. You can build her even for damage to hit hard. But I've got her built with high resistance, so she's like a backup mischief tank, which is quite nice because she has a blood shield accessory. And because of her passive, right, she was going to... Where is it? Her A1. Yeah, the A, the passive on her A1. Her... Her default ability has a passive, but she will keep counterattacking the fear head, so she'll keep giving herself blood shield, which can help her mischief tank. Bit of a backup, which I do like quite a bit. And finally, then Arbiter is in like an arena build. Arbiter. Uh, so she is in four different sets. She's got a little bit of righteous, a little bit of speed, a little bit of perception, a bit of stone skin. You know, she's got a bit of everything. Uh, so she's coming in a reasonably tanky about as fast as I can build her. She actually has enough accuracy to buff strip and place weaken, which is quite nice and a decent chunk of resistance. Like we're not, not crazy far. Okay, we're pretty far off of mischief tanking or anything like that. But you know, she's solid enough. I'm actually kind of surprised she stays alive. Uh, uh, honestly, I'm kind of surprised because she doesn't have War Master to heal up, but she stays alive just fine here in this. And she's got Polymorph more so for Arena. Uh, though I might switch that on. I mean, it doesn't really matter. She's only two star if she was three or five star it matter more yeah it's fine she's got a bit of accuracy why the heck not um yeah that's uh that's the build so let me show you a couple of alternatives so we come over to hydra here let's jump into brutal where were we so yeah we're up here so again we've performed really really well again this is the team it looks solid i love this all the sets blending together i find that's hilarious so funny um Here's a great alternative, even more budget. Love this. This is from Llama. You guys know uh, Llama's kind of a genius when it comes to strategies. He has a ton of really good ones. Uh, so here we've got the Razzlevark. So he actually has his Razzlevark in Cursed. We have a Cursed Razzlevark. Then we've got a Relentless on Varl, who's actually slamming the damage. Then very similar, we've got the Arbiter, the Shemale. This time we've got an Ugo and uh, Vizix. So yeah, we both we have decreased defense and weaken. Um, we get decreased attack from Varl. It's very, very slick little team. I love this team. Uh, very nice. Yeah, very nice. So even more accessible because, again, Varl is from Doom Tower. Vizix is a login champion. You, you can build this team, right? You can build this team. Llama's got kind of crazy gear. His gear is definitely going to be better than yours. But still, you'll be able to put in a smashing performance. Um, so, yeah, again, you lose the monkey damage. Uh, but you sort of swap Lydia. For Ugo, you get a bit more healing. You take out Krisk, replace her with the Vizix. You get probably more consistent decrease speed. Yeah, you don't need the increased speed from Lydia. You've got it from Razzlevark. You get the weaken. Decrease attack, we've got it with Krisk, but he's got it with Varl. It's a great team. It's really slick. I guess the thing to be, watch out for would be if you're ever against a f magic affinity Wrath, you could be in trouble because you could miss the decrease attack and die. That could be bad, but yeah. Sick. Love it. Really, really nice. Um, let me see. We have another one up here. I thought this blew me away. I couldn't believe the damage. This is from Restlex. Lots of great teams in here, by the way. Check this one out. So very similar team. We've got the Razzlevark. He has him in the better set of lethal. We've got the Curse set. Krisk. His is actually in Cruelty, which is interesting. Uh, but then we've got Sun Wukong, the Shemale. So four of the champions are the same. Instead of Arbiter, we've got Lanicus for the increased attack and also increased crit rate. And then we've got Bellinor for the decreased defense and weaken instead of Lydia. So we don't have a strength in, which is what Lydia brings, but Bellinor is doing way more damage. So that's a big thing. 
a lot more damage out of Belenor than out of Lydia. That's cool. If we don't need the strength, then we're fine. Lydia gives us increased speed. We don't need that because we've got Razzlevarg. We get another buff extender with Lanicus, helping everything stay active. I mean, it's a billion damage. It's crazy. This is one of the coolest teams I've seen in a long time. Like, this blew me away. This was like, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. So cool. So again, this is, take the same team I just used, swap out two champions. Possibly it's better gear, I don't know. And more than double the damage is actually insane. But Bellinor coming in as a really good pick. Now, Venus would be a good option as well. Any of these decreased defense uh, weakened champions are good. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was a sick one. So a couple of different team ideas, but yeah, like these teams are doing really good damage. Uh, here's a cool one from Chunk. I love this as well. Krokmar coming in with like Razor and Taras. That's sick. That's fun. Um, anything that's not Trunda is fun. Here we got again, another team. We've got like the, uh, Razzlebarg with Arbiter. Uh, we've got Curse Set on Venus. Another great option for Curse Set. Really good. Uh, like we've got the Acrisias in here. Uh, we've got, we don't need a curse set on this team because we've got Mithrala. That's sort of the thing, right? You want to get Hex in, but unless, like, Mithrala got, obviously, the Archer is like a top tier Hexer. Um, but yeah, you, you really want to get the Hex in. You really, really do. Here's a sort of similar one here. They've got Hex uh, cursed on Artak, and you can see his damage is huge. Again, another sort of similar team. So lots of different variants of this idea. Point is, yeah, hopefully giving you some ideas. I actually ditched my hard team. My hard team did worse this week. We slapped it in on full auto. We did like the 400. It did 500 million last time. So we did a bit worse this time. Worse luck, say la vie. Um, but uh, the advantage is, again, it's sad. Last week, I should have recorded last week. Last week, we did 500 million with both of these teams. Uh, but I wasn't able to lock in the key because we wanted to low score in Hydra Clash. This week, they're more like 400 million each, but it's still, it's pretty, pretty cool. It does mean my Nightmare team isn't so good, but we'll do a fun video on that in the next couple of days as well. Because I bought, I had to build a champion I don't like to make it work. So we'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know. Have you farmed up the Cursed set? I think it's just an amazing set. Definitely you want to get, I mean, even honestly, having eight good pieces of cursed gear. You can get two champions into cursed. You can put your Mithrala in your third team and you've just massively boosted up your Hydra damage without needing to pull like Michinakis or anything like that. It's huge. Let me know. Who do you have built in cursed? Who's your favorite champion? For me, Krisk is the first one and he's killing it. I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.